How many hours do you code every day? I want you to be honest with me. I'm not talking about the total time you spend watching tutorials while scrolling your phone. I'm talking about the time you spend writing actual code in your editor. And I want you to give me the average per day. So even if you skip a day of coding, the day still counts. Let's face it. You already know that you have the ability to achieve whatever you want if you could consistently code for a few hours every day. It's just that life gets in the way. Today, I want to share how I managed to beat procrastination and code for 4 hours a day while doing a full-time job. This helped me go from a dead-end career to working at Amazon within one year. Let's do this. There are two problems that we need to solve here. Number one, how to code every day. And number two, how to actually code for 4 hours in a day. Believe it or not, the first problem is harder to solve than the second one. So let's start there. Not knowing what to do is the easiest way to get nothing done. Imagine that I ask you to make this very fancy Italian dish called pasta aglio e olio. Many people won't even bother trying to make it because they don't know where to start. Now imagine that I give you this recipe for the dish. If you look a little closely at this recipe, you will realize that pasta aglio e olio means nothing but pasta with garlic and oil, which is not the most difficult thing to make. Most of the time when we procrastinate, it's because we don't really have any clarity on what needs to be done. And this holds true for programming as well. Just 15 more minutes before I start coding. When I used to tell myself that, it was not because I found programming hard to do. It was because I didn't really have any clear plan on what I needed to finish on a particular day. So I became a little more intentional about planning my programming lessons. Instead of telling myself, I will code tomorrow, I would tell myself that I will finish exercise 2, 3 and 4 tomorrow. Doing this every night before sleeping made sure that I had a clear plan for the next day. As a result, I would wake up excited knowing that I am gonna slay 3 more exercises today. Of course, I made sure that number of exercises I choose are doable within 4 hours. By the way, we will discuss why I keep stressing on exactly 4 hours shortly. Trust me, it's not random. Knowing what to do is a great first step, but you'll still need to do a few more things to help you stay motivated. If you've ever used a language learning app like Duolingo, you would know the power of streaks. A streak is nothing but the total number of consecutive days that you have been finishing your exercises. There are hundreds of videos on social media where people are sharing their Duolingo streaks, and there are a couple of reasons for that. Number one, Maintaining a streak is a great incentive not to miss a day of exercising. Number two, if you share your streak with your friends who are in the same boat as you, it can be motivating for them as well. But how can programmers track their streaks? The best way would be to use GitHub. Consecutive dark greens on your GitHub activity will make sure you stay on track. Alternatively, you can go old school and use a physical calendar. It really does not matter. What's important is to track your progress and find people to share it with. So now you know what needs to be done. Let's talk about how to do it. You have a to-do list that contains the exercises for the day. But to-do lists by themselves fail in the execution phase. That's because let's face it, one notification on the phone and you can kiss your to-do list goodbye. So what's the solution here? Like they say, you need fire to counter fire. Similarly, you need a notification to counter notification. If only there was an app that can send us notifications when it's time to do our exercises. Do you guys know that app where you can set reminders for events and it sends you a notification at the time of the event? Yes, I'm talking about the calendar app on your phone. So open your calendar app and set up an event called Code Crunch that repeats daily. This way of doing things is also called time blocking. Guard this notification with your life and make sure you don't swipe it away. If you honor this notification for a few days, you will be well on your way of building the habit of coding daily. But all that work with nothing in return seems unreasonable. For some people like me, just making progress is not a good enough reward. We need something more. So here is what I came up with. At the end of every day, I would reward myself with quality time on social media. But that's if and only if I complete my exercise goal of the day. This helped me in two ways. One, the very thought of not using social media at all made sure that I finished my exercises. But more importantly, this limited the time I wasted on social media. Now your vices might be very different than mine. For you, it might be playing video games or having that chocolate bar. It does not really matter. All you need to do is find a bad habit and tie it to finish finishing exercises. And voila, you have created a system for yourself to win. Now that you have plan and rewards in place, how can you make sure that you are getting maximum out of your time? That's where this book called Deep Work by Cal Newport comes in. You see, 
When Bill Gates was developing BASIC in 1974, he wrote the first version in just 8 weeks by using deep work. He would become so engrossed in work that he would often collapse on his keyboard while writing code. He would sleep for a couple of hours and get back at it again. Deep work that he did during those 8 weeks became instrumental in the success of Microsoft. But is there any science backing deep work? Researchers have found that intense periods of focus lead to the development of myelin around our neurons. Myelin acts as an insulator around your neurons and helps to transmit neural signals faster. And this plays a vital role in skill development and mastery. Research also shows that people who are new to deep work can only do it for about one hour. And even at their best, people can only do it for about four hours, typically in 60 to 90 minute blocks. So when we chose four hours to code every day, it's not arbitrary. We want to become masters at deep work. But how do we do that? In the book, Cal Newport recommends three ways. First, schedule your deep work sessions. We have already done that. Two, schedule your distractions. Most of us have no discipline around when to go online. We reach for our phone whenever we feel like it, but that's causing our brain to never go into deep work. Cal Newport recommends having a notepad near you and writing down time at which you'll have your next distraction break. Challenge yourself to stay focused until that time. Lastly, do an evening shutdown daily. We briefly talked about this in our planning phase. Write down your unfinished tasks on one side and actions you will take on them tomorrow on the other side. Basically plan ahead for tomorrow like we discussed in the beginning of the video. Now you can do everything we discussed but still fail to code consistently. And that's because of the valley of disappointment. Let me explain. After all the planning and preparation we did today, you would be thinking that you will put 4 hours every day and grow linearly like this. But that's almost never the case. In the beginning, it's highly likely that you will be below your expectations. You might not be able to do deep work for 4 hours every day like the research shows. Or it might take you longer to finish the planned exercises. This phase is called Valley of Disappointment. This is where most people throw away all the planning and hard work into the trash and give up. But what they don't know is that once you get past the Valley of Disappointment, the returns you get are much higher than expected. Genius is the art of eternal patience. So don't stress over a bad day or two and keep going. If you like the idea of deep work and want to know even more ways to study more in less time, watch this video. My name is Sahil and I'll see you in the next one.